Let's see here. Who do I know that has red hair? Oh, wait. All red, everything. Eva Marie. Oh, wait. Hello, folks. Welcome back. For I am the one and only. I am a hobo, Tom. And I'm here to talk about some SmackDown. Do I really have to do this? I guess I do. My cat's just staring at me. You can't see her, but she's kind of there staring at the bedroom area. You can see her little, little white butt over there. Her white legs staring at something. Who knows what. But wow! This was a weird smackdown. And not necessarily a good one. But before... <laughs> I, I delve into that. Jeez, I can't believe I really have to do that. But that's okay. Um, Donnie Soros! Thank you, sir. You are in that six count. I forget what Donnie said. I forget when he said it. It might have been a comment. It might have even been. I don't think it was an email. I haven't. I mean, I have to check that email one day. Maybe he was something about impact. I forget. Whatever. Nevertheless, he said something, so he earns a six count. Hurt Hawkins, you, sir, know how to play the air guitar.
Daddy Cool! You're the coolest guy because you're listening to your briefcase boombox. Wow, too! You can crawl out of here. And Nico of Death, you sir always win by dirty pin. Yeah, I'm doing this a little bit quick because I think I did something to my camera. And I think there's some weird lag time, so I'm going to go as fast as I can. Uh, so, SmackDown. Uh, this was not good. I don't know what it is about SmackDown. And I know Hurt Calkins and I got in a whole debate about Mandy Rose's Meth Lab Trailer Park Trash Florida Outfit. But there's something wrong with SmackDown. So I honestly think now Impact Wrestling is actually better than SmackDown. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if, and I don't know how to check it. Someone, people check stuff all the time. I wouldn't be surprised if AEW is going to surpass SmackDown in ratings. Because this show was not necessarily good. So it starts off a Jeff Hardy promo. He says he saw someone with red hair. Or they said uh, someone says they saw someone with red hair driving a car like that. Seamus? The only other one I could think of is, again, as I mentioned, all red everything, Eva Marie. And she's in some movie with, like, Bruce Willis, I think, now. I think it's like, or was like a straight, like, a straight-to-DVD video. Not necessarily the career move she wants to make. But, hey, if she's happy, whatever. Hey, if you're single, Eva Marie, so am I. But um, with this, of course, one of Seamus heard his name calling, Hey, fella, you're calling me out? And then they start a brawl. And then it goes, the, the brawl, Seamus gets the better of it. I guess this is going to be a match during Backlash. Again, I thought In Your House is going to be either really good or really bad. Backlash might be either really good or really bad. I don't think there's going to be any middle any middle ground there. And I'll do that uh, prediction video. Or I'll, I'll have uh, El Vagabundo is pretty good at doing these predictions. He did the one earlier for In Your House. He can do the he can do the one for um, Backlash because I don't feel like doing it. Uh, then we see Otis and Mandy Rhodes backstage, and 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 wow, Ma Mandy looks terrible in that jean bikini. That looks literally like the worst part of the '80s, which is not good. Or if you're living here in Florida, it's it's par for the course. If you're coming out of a trailer park after making some type of illicit Abusive substance. Math. <clears throat> but yeah, so they see Baron's crown. They steal it. They see the Possum King's crown. And they steal it. For Otis! Otis! 
All hail the new possum king! Hail Otis! Hail Otis! Hail Otis! And I do need to get a new chair because this chair is coming super squeaky. And well, I have a whole bunch of pens. That's okay. So the first match of the night, uh, King Corbin obviously sees that someone stole his crown. He's upset. So it's Otis versus take, taking on King Corbin. Uh, Otis, for the most part, gets the better of King Corbin for the first part. Then Baron, he's heavy striking. Uh, he tries to work. He tries to he's very heavy striking. He tries to wear down the bigger Otis. Um, Otis eventually does his comeback. Then Corbin goes outside. Uh, he takes his crown. Otis falls. And then Corbin hits him with a chair. It's a D. I'm not even going to do my Dusty Rhodes impersonation. I was unhappy with this. These wrestlers should really know better. Um, I, I, I know wrestling. Maybe I've seen too much Jim Cornette, but this seems to happen way too frequently now. So, yeah, Otis gets hit with a chair. Like, no sells it. Eventually, Otis, Otis, Otis up. <laughs> he hulks up. Otis is up. Um, hits the caterpillar. Um, Otis wins by DQ. It wasn't really that good of a match, though. It wasn't even entertaining. You know what? SmackDown starts off with a can of soup match. And wow, it, it, I want to say it got better, but it's in it. Because then we had the Miz and Morrison. They're like stalking Braun in a white Renta van. Like this looks like something very 90s copish movie looking. Wait a second. Gene Bras. White stay cut fans. I'm having a 90s flashback, folks. All we need are hyper color t shirts. Oh, wait. No, I haven't seen those yet. And like super neon color stuff. Wait. I have seen those. Oh, God. Uh. I'm having, I'm having flashbacks from my youth, man. Well, actually, my youth was pretty good. So, I think 1985, I would go home from school and just wait for the top 10 music countdown list. Be ready by the VCR to videotape some of those cool videos they're showing. Gee, I don't think people know how to videotape stuff anymore. And then Shorty came out, he did a little promo. Mojo Raleigh was there. Uh, he gets beat up by Sheamus and Cesaro and Mojo Rally. The New Day come out and make the save. Yeah, that's okay. That's gonna set up. That's all oh, the setups are so terrible too. And pre <sighs> geez, predictable. Then Lacey Evans versus Sonya Deville. Dose. I don't know how to do it, but if you go back into my video archive. One of the first NXT matches I saw here in Daytona Beach was these two. Wow, did the crowd snooze through this. I'll tell you what. The crowd began to snooze through this one. They've improved. At least they're not asking each other what to do in the ring. They're not literally calling their own spots in the ring. But still, it's not good. And, oh, wait. Boo, Sonya Deville. Boo. 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 The chorus of boos come out. The boo birds. Um, Evans got jumped at the beginning. Which I guess is a better beginning to their first match I saw. Uh, this is a rematch. Three whole years in the in the making. Wow. 
I guess WWE does do learn long term booking. Uh, three year rematch. Well, this crowd is a little bit more excited than Daytona Beach crowd was. Um, so we're gonna build. Do, at least you know who is the face and who is the heel. Sonya Deville, boo Sonya Deville, is definitely the heel. Uh, she steps on Lacey Evans' longer blonde hair. I didn't really realize how much ass Lacey Evans shows. But um, then, there was a, then there was like a weird ref bump. Like the ref was there and like said, no, 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 we need to stop this match. I don't know if that was planned because it was like a weird, awkward thing. And again, Lacey Evans looks so confused. Sonya Deville looks so confused. And it didn't look like that genuine confusion. They're just like, huh? Or Sonya Deville was like, huh? So it wasn't like the, oh my god, what happened? This was the, huh? Yeah. Um, and then after that, it was shades of three years ago. I don't know what it is between these two, but they have, they seem to have good chemistry when I saw them at the gym. But as soon as they get into the wrestling ring, boo. Uh, yeah, shades of three years ago, the crowd starts to go quiet. It becomes everyone's favorite time of the match. It is oh, Russ Hold Mania. Sonya Deville hasn't learned how to good, do a good chin lock either. Because the way she had it, like, I could see the space between. Like Lacey Evans and Lacey Evans, heaven bless her, she was trying to sell it when like it was being held like this. At least you want to put it, because you can rest it on the chin. It's awkward. It's not, I mean, even doing it to yourself, it's not necessarily pleasant. It's not going to hurt you, though. I mean, that's always the real thing when it looks... Just awkward enough to be real looking, but not just, gee, it's three inches away from the neck and chin. Why is she selling this? I mean, I think even when my friend and I wrestled up at um, Killer Kowalski's gym, the leg kicks I, I threw were pretty snug. They connected. They made a good thud, though. The headlocks were obvious. I didn't like him throwing himself. I liked tossing him more. And I liked him tossing me more. It just feels more natural. Uh, we didn't protect each other. Um, he did hit the tombstone pile drive on me. That was perfectly safe. I think, his again, his knees took the brunt of it. My head was a good, like, three inches off the mat. I just kind of, like, flopped down. So that was cool. Uh, the choke slam I ate. Like, even Killer Qual, even though even the one, like, pro guy, like, he was like, wow, you got, you got some ups on that. And, and I sold really good for that. We were snug and stiff with things we knew we could be. But when it came to things we knew could really do damage, we were, like, super safe. It's just that, that weird balancing act. Granted, our match was probably awkward. There were better matches. Me coming off the top turnbuckle and a moonsault with him, like, getting bug eyes. And I'll tell you, I, I still never have ever seen anyone roll as far to the other side as quickly as he did when he saw me jump off the top. He saw his life flash before I, my, his eyes, and I'm like, ha, 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 
because I'll tell you what, that top rope does look a lot higher than you think it is. But then when you go up there, you're like, I can either be a man or a mouse. And I said, I'm the man. I did break my wrist of doing that, though, but that's okay. Se the second match I had, I just did an elbow, and that, that was, even though the person moved, that was more understandable. Um, but again, snug when you knew you could be. But again, super, like anything that came, like shoulders, like collarbone and above, we were like super safe with. Anything like chest to belly button, we were snug. Anything around the groin, I don't think we did. Then anything from like on the quads, I knew I could get away with a little snugger. And even like some like knees or thighs to the gut. He said we're a little snug, but at the end, it's like, yeah, whatever. It was a good match. So, again, if you have a chin lock and the person is selling when you're, like, all the way out here, like, see this space? Like, yeah, you can hold this forever. And it's like, I'd be like, the hell? Oh, wait a second. I, I better do something. But... I mean, I was like laughing him. Like I would, I think he tried to do that, like like really loose. Like I mean, he just put it down, and I literally like, grabbed his elbow. Was, like, dude, just stick it there. And like trying to fight out, and I just pushed his arm up, so it so it looked better. I mean, that's like I'm sure basics almost. We could have never been. A, I've never been a fan of these two wrestling though. Especially Boo Sonya Deville. Because God knows my princess Kimberly somehow, and I don't know why, made her look amazing. And even then she didn't look that great. She just looked vicious. She looked like she knew how to kick. Which if you have an MMA background, you kind of know how to kick anyway, so. Um, then there was a choke on the steps. That was pretty good. Lacey got a little bloody. I was like, ooh, this might get good. Lacey got a little, little blood on her nose. I think that was from the steps. I think she just cut herself on, like, again, accidents do happen in the ring. It wasn't deliberate. I think she just, like, caught a corner of the steps, like, literally on the nose. Like, you could tell. It wasn't a whole busted nose because it was just, like, this little light red splotch of blood. <laughs> like in amateur wrestling it honestly looks like she just popped a pimple so <laughs> you never know um, I'll tell you what Lacey does have Lacey does have a great uh, springboard moonsault I will give credit where credit's due Lacey Evans has an amazing springboard moonsault it looks smooth it looks clean the height she gets is great. The rotation she gets, she gets is amazing. She doesn't have to cheat anything. That looks amazing. The woman's right looks pretty good. Everything else didn't look so good. Um, yeah, so when you hit the running knee, I mean, it's a, it's a running freaking like thigh to the back of the neck. It's really bad. Um, then Mandy Rose comes up, says, "Hey, Sonya." You're not that good. Mandy's right. I think I might be reading too much into this. I don't want to say this is this is that audible. Like someone in gorilla position said, even these NXT people are getting bored and are going to their cell phone during this match. Hey Mandy. Get on the big screen. Yeah, right over here. Yeah, we have to get this crowd psyched up again. And and I know they're on their feet for 10-hour tapings. I've worked in retail. I've been on my feet. I think the longest I was on my feet was actually when I worked in the seafood department for 12 hours straight. 
I got my overtime, so I'm happy. And hey, I got paid piles of money for that. As a teacher, I used to teach for the most part on my feet, walking around, because moving targets are, are, are best targets. And they're hard to see when the kids are screwing around. Um, I know a lot of teachers like to teach from chairs now. Lazy assholes. But, um, in retail, you're on your feet eight hours a day with like a half hour break. So don't even tell me that, oh, they, oh, it's hard for them to be on their feet for 10 hours. I wish I was getting half of what they were getting to be on my feet for 10 hours. I think, and I'll give a very quick story and finish. Actually, I'll, I, actually, I'll finish this matchup because it's not, not much more. So Mandy distracts Sonya Deville. Uh, she, she turns around, eats a woman's right, match over. Lacey Evan wins. Can a suit match? So the story I'm going to talk is when I was an extra on the movie IQ. I forget if that was ninety-eight or ninety-nine. I mean, that was a while ago. It was like, listen, it was like twenty years ago. And this is when you actually looked at jobs in the newspaper. In the newspaper, they said extras wanted for a movie, um, for for big budget Hollywood movie, uh, be at Princeton parking lot by whatever hall that was. I forget the hall name. At 5 a.m., bring... ID and social security card. I said, hey, I was right out of college. You know what? 50 bucks and I got to be in a movie. I, I showed up to the lot, waited in line, got there 5 a.m. Like I said, waited in line for an hour. Literally, when I got to the, the one booth, they had you uh, spread out, I think, by whatever your last name is, they had like three or four booths open. Like whatever your last name was, that's, that's where you went. A person literally read, read from a script. And this is, and I'm going to paraphrase parts of it and not read the whole thing. Hello, welcome. This is your taking part as an extra in the movie IQ. You are a movie extra. You are not part of the Screen Guild actors. You do not have talking parts. You don't have any acting parts. If you try to improvise, you'll be escorted off the set by security. If you try, if you say, speak anything, you'll be off, escorted by security off the set. If you try to interact with the directors, producers, or any other members of the staff, you'll be escorted off the movie set without pay. All of, anytime you are escorted off the movie set, you'll be escorted and forfeit your pay. If you try to interact with said at with the main actors, you will be escorted the movie off pay. If you are if you try to interact with any members of the Screen Guild Association, you'll be escorted off the movie set without pay. They listed like um, if like 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 15, 20 things. Whatever it was that you did, you would be escorted off the movie set by security without pay. So I'm like, oh, I'm just a kid. Like whatever it's saying okay do you and then of course at the end do you understand all this and you say yes it's like okay print print and sign here and they they, they randomly give you like a sticky note mine had d and they said go to and they literally said okay they, they took something from a pile said here go to this cone so i had my little my little like i don't even think they give me a sticky note they just said okay you're going to d and they, they check something off. And I went to look, go look for a cone that said D. And literally it's like being in kindergarten. Because I think there were 20 to 30 of us. Standing around a cone marked D. There were 20. Like we were like say here. So here was cone A. There was 20 to 30 people there. 20, 30 cone B. 20, 30 cone C. 20, I was at cone D. Um, D, E, F. I forget what other letters there were, but, but, but there are groups of like, say, 20 to 30 people. They did provide you with lunch, 
the lunch was literally two slices of like the cheapest white bread they could find. And then you had a choice of ham. I think it was only just ham or turkey. And it was like literally like one slice of ham and one slice of like cheap American cheese on like, like the sandwich I think itself was like this thick. And you could only get one. And you had to choose like ham or turkey. It was, it was something really cheap. And they gave you like a bottle of water. Like like to drink. I don't think you even got chips. And I think they had like a choice. Like they just had like a literally like a cooler fruit. And you could choose like an apple. I think it was like apples, pears, sandwich, and like something to drink. I got So I got there at 5 a.m. Waited in line till about 5.30. Got in my cone at 6.00. Had lunch, I think at 11, because literally for like three hours you're standing at this cone. And actually more than that. It was like, yeah, it was like about five, six hours you're standing at this cone. It was a summertime, so it was starting to get warm. I just know, I think 11 o'clock I had my sandwich. A little afternoon. Cone D. Cone D. Please follow this person and they literally had a big sign that had a D on top. So like kindergartners, we all follow this person. We get we get to our area. You only walking down this street in this direction. Do not deviate. If you deviate you'll be escorted from the set and, and they told you all the rules. They literally said Yes, do not make eye contact with a director. Do not look directly at the camera. Do not say anything. Again, if not, you get escorted off the movie set without pay. So I just remember, I'm just kind of walking down the street like this. And literally, if you've ever seen big budget movies, literally one side of the street's walking in one direction. One side of the street's literally walking in the other direction. And then the main, main actors are, are like somewhere... But they're like the only ones who will who ever walk against like the direction. So like it's funny, like one side's going one way, one side's going the directly opposite. I think it took all of like five or ten seconds. And then you hear cut. And then like a second or two after that, or it was probably longer than that, like 30 seconds. So you walk literally for 30 seconds in one direction with your head down like this. Then, like, after the 30 seconds, okay, group, if you were in group D, follow the person with the sign. And again, the person with the group D sign comes back. We really follow them to another booth area. And there they have, like, literally a stack of 50s. <laughs> I don't know how they got it. But they're like, okay. It's like, print. Here's sign here. Here's your $50. Get out of here. Well, not get out of here, but you're done for the day. I think that all ended by 2 o'clock. It eventually came out to be like 90 degrees outside. I was tired because I woke up at 4 to be there at 5. So that's 4 to 12. I was there 8 hours before we were giving any marching directions. They gave us final instructions, I think think like at one and I managed to leave I think a little it might have been a little before two I remember getting home at two but getting home was a lot quicker just the way the roads the roads were set up so yeah it was like 10 hours for like 50 bucks and I just said I'm never doing this again and oh, they also told you, um, uh, put your name the way you want it to be in the script, but it can't exceed so many letters. So it's like Thomas Keller. And actually, if you do watch the movie IQ, at the very end, my scene is, I think, Einstein. Oh, jeez, I forgot who was acting right now. Whoever was his, was his daughter and whoever her boyfriend was. 
they were, I think, either walking or driving. I was on one side of the street, literally walking with my head down. Head down. I think for like two to five seconds, you could see my face. But literally, it was like this. If you blinked, you missed it. And then when they had the extras credits, because everyone, the thing is, if you do ever go in a movie, they do give you credit for being in the movie. The thing is, you're at the very end where it says, like, extras. There's, like, the five or six columns of just, like, piles of names. And everyone's person's names, like, literally, like, this, like, this big. So, if you, you can't see it on DVD, because, but on, like, old-style VHS tapes, if you pause it right, and the bars didn't get in the way could actually see my name Thomas Keller there and that was the first last and only time I swear I would ever do it because for the 50 bucks for the 10 hours of waiting in, in like Princeton City Heat it's not fun because that's when I lived back in New Jersey actually when I lived in Lawrenceville right before my family left to Brigantine but that was terrible and I said, I'm never doing that again. So when the NXT people say, well, we have to stand here and watch this pro wrestling for 10 hours. You're getting forty to $50,000 a year to do that. You could give me $200. And I would be, for 10 hours, I'd be, you're paying me $200 to be mega fan? Yeah! Sonya Deville? Boo! Lacey Evans? Yeah! I'd be super fan for what they probably get per per half hour or per hour or whatever, whatever it turns out to be. But yeah, I could do that. Uh, then there's a Kalen Braun segment. Um... Kayla gets slimed. Then we have AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan doing an doing interview. Say, well, AJ, if you're the man, you'll take on someone. Says, like, okay, fine, I'll fight someone. I'll fight your old coach. And then, because he's a loser anyway. So Drew Gulak jumps AJ Styles. Um, so then they have to clear out the ring and they go to commercial. Then they come back. Next match, AJ Styles versus Drew Gulak. Um, for the most part, it's a classic wrestling match. It's actually pretty good. This was actually probably the best match of the night. Yeah, it should be. Um, AJ Styles. He started to go Chikara style. I like that. And then he eventually switched New Japan style. Uh, Gulak can do his own striking. They traded um, some submissions. Uh, Gulak hit the Michinoku driver. That was pretty cool. AJ Styles hit the Scorpion Death Rock. It's so good and refreshing to see other wrestlers use kind of not so much signature moves from others, but but definitive moves that other wrestlers have used. But it looks like anyone can use a DDT. Every, everyone uses a DDT nowadays. There's nothing special about it. So I used it and uh, Takamichi Noku. I think yeah, he might be a wrestling, but I mean. You never hear you never hear his name much anymore. Uh, then um, the only bad thing is uh, AJ Styles got rolled up after he went. He tried to get the South Clash. Drew countered that with a roll up. It was it was different at least. Um, that roll up though for AJ Styles going into next week and then having to face Daniel Bryan made him look like a dope. Oh, still a good cheeseburger match, though. Uh, then there's Miz and Morrison. It's like, yeah, we'll get Braun again. Because I know, like, they put, like, Alka Seltzer in his um, protein shake cup. I'll tell you what, that NXT Performance Center, they have some nice stuff behind, behind that um, protein bar. Uh, they slime poor Kayla. That was kind of funny, though. And then they started to take, like, golf clubs and baseball bats to, to Braun's car. Like, hey, is that a fly on it? I should say, 
Hey, is that a pair of love bugs doing it on the windshield? You gotta get rid of those love bugs. That actually would have been funnier. Then we have the six-man tag that they teased earlier in the New Day and Troy G taking on Shinsuke Nakamura, Cesaro, and Mojo Rally. Mojo's only here to here to eat the pin. And there's no qualms about that. Troy G gets caught and he gets by Mojo. He's ready to come off the top rope really quick. That quick win. It's caught by Mojo. Mojo tossed him. Cesaro like walloped him. That was good. Um, Mojo hit a cross body. Then there were quick tags by um, the New Day and Shory G. Uh, Kofi eventually went to formulate WWE Tag Team Wrestling. Kofi got beat up. Shory G did a flying cross body. It was actually pretty good. Uh, went into an ankle lock then. Got Mojo into that. Shinsei breaks that up. Uh, Kofi got the pin though, but it was like a weird finish. And even the announcer said, huh? So when the announcers say that, when when you can tell from the announce crew that there's something going on, like I don't know if the ref said, "Hey, bring it home." I the boss said, "Bring it home." You have to do what the boss says. Uh, not necessarily that the that the announce crew would actually get it, but that was a weird finish. Again, Kofi pinned Mojo, and you knew that was going to happen. Just a ham sandwich. Uh, Miz and Morrison eventually get snitched up by security. Security did their job. Uh, Miz and Morrison need to learn to wear masks. Just like all of the looters and rioters out there so that they he can't tell who it is. Because not the security guy could have said, oh yeah, it was Miz and Morrison. They're over there in that white van. If they had on a mask on, the guy could have said, I don't know, it's two masked people running around Orlando. Oh, oh cops should get him. But no, once they did that, once because they didn't they did not wear their masks. And of course, Braun Strowman, the master of destroying stuff, went over there, flipped over their van. They're stuck in the van probably for a while. But I doubt it. I think like that van had like two side doors or it was like, hey. You just can't get out. And the main event of the evening. Again, another kind of weird finish. It was Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss taking on Bailey and, and Sasha Banks. This was weird because Nikki starts off. Nikki goes Nikki. That's always good stuff on poor Bailey. Um, eventually, Alexa gets tagged in. She gets her licks and much. She gets beat up. Again, very formulate WWE style tag team match. Beat up the smallest person. Alexa Bliss is kind of the smallest person. Not saying Nikki Cross is tall, but but Nikki Cross has a cute tummy and a little, little booty on her, and oh, those 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 round mommy bags of hers. Killian Dane must be so happy at night. Uh, but I digress. Um, and Alexa, she gets choked on the rope by Bailey. Nikki Cross goes Nikki on Bailey again for a comeback. Bailey, Bailey tries to go, oh, uh, tosses, I think, Nikki in the corner goes, oh, oh, she reverts back to old face Bailey for a little bit. Uh, Alexa eventually punches her way out of that. Alexa gets tagged in, she starts punching people. The second rope, Bailey to Bailey to Belly. I think by this point, it's like, dude, that should end the match. Um, Alexa. Got launched to the outside. Or someone got launched. Yeah, because then they did like some weird long finish. Whereas. Yeah, Alexa got launched to the out. Yeah, Alexa got launched the outside. Nikki Cross was in the ring. Sasha Banks has a bank statement. It was a blind tag by Bailey. Sasha Banks found the bank statement. Bailey told Sasha Banks, "Hey, I tag you. 
The ref's gonna disqualify us. Get out. She puts on some 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 wonky GT um um I don't know cross face whatever it is. Um, and of course she crawls gets gets the ring gets the rope break. Um, Bailey gets beat up. Sasha Banks goes back in the ring, drags Bailey to their corner, tags Bailey, goes for again the Banks team, and again. But no, turns that gets reversed, and that gets by Nikki Cross and, into like a reversal, and then there was a reversal into that into a crucifix pin. It was just a weird, again wonky ending. And again, even the Nasha said that was weird. But Bailey and Sasha, Sasha Banks are now women's tag team champions. Another ham sandwich match. I'll tell you what, SmackDown's not doing good because SmackDown's eating a whole bunch of ham sandwiches. And that was SmackDown. Not necessarily good. Um, as far as this week, this week's all over. Uh, I'm off tomorrow. I do have to work on making my match card for In Your House. Um, I do have to work that night, so I'll be a little bit late. I think the show starts at 7. I'll be back before 8. We'll probably end around 9, 9.30 or so. I'll get to see most of it at least. Um, I'll let you know how things go. And then next week is going to be again with Sunday. It's going to be the In Your House. Monday night, raw. Tuesday. Tuesday is soup day for Impact Wrestling. AEW is on Wednesday. Thursday, I'm going to have El Vagabundo Dos Ocho Nueve come in do his predictions. Friday, oh God, I have to do this on Friday, next Friday too. Uh, Friday is going to be another, God, it's going to be another SmackDown. It's a go home show. I hope it's painless. Off Saturday, then, oh, geez, Backlash is Sunday. Try to have fun, folks. Bye.